Oh, hello. Man down. Now this shit is never gonna end. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Oh, you noticed? Yeah, you know, just don't mean to flex or anything, but you know, ran into a bit of money recently. Definitely didn't get anyone. And uh, yeah, pretty much, uh, oh, you can't say that on YouTube, can you? Anyway, so today I'm super excited to take you guys to the behind the scenes of my most recent animated film called Deja Vu. It's a short film created entirely in Unreal Engine 5. Now last time, if you watched it, we broke down how I made Jedi Master 2, myself and my brother in some motion capture suits, trying to take each other's heads off. And from the comments, you guys enjoyed it. You look exactly how I imagine someone who would do this would look. I love the hashtag for Corridor Crew as if they'll even notice you and in your head, They'll be like, oh my God, pathetic. Also, the graphics are crap and you haven't managed to mocap properly, but whatever, that's the least of your worries. You look like you smell. How did you know? We'll dive into how I use Rococo mocap, metahumans, some of the problems I ran into as well, and some unique visual techniques that I used to really bring this piece to life. So. Let's get into it. In Deja Vu, a man finds himself trapped in a mysterious hotel facing unsettling encounters and eerie figures. Guided by the mysterious caretaker, he must navigate through ominous hallways and strange riddles. But how did I create this spooky, dreamlike atmosphere? Well, let's start with the basics. Environment. There is an amazingly high quality asset pack called Sicker Mansion, and this is on the Unreal Marketplace. I'll leave the link in the description if you guys yourself want to check it out. It allowed me to essentially build the hotel with photoreal Lego pieces. I was essentially a kid all over again, playing with my Legos, feeling joy. Last time I ever felt anything in my bloody life. Now, once the environment and the lighting was set up, the real fun was up next, mocap. Motion capture, or mocap for short, is a type of technology that many films use to record human and animal movement alike, and then transfer that over to a digital version of a human or an animal, whatever they need. For Deja Vu, I use the Rococo motion capture suits. Not sponsored, by the way, but Rococo, you know, if you like what you see, you know, call me. No, please, seriously, call me. Anyway, this suit is super lightweight and is packed full of sensors that record every single movement I make. It captures everything from big gestures to little ones. And the process is pretty straightforward. I perform, the suit records, and then I import the data into Unreal Engine 5. Now with the performance captured, and now in Unreal Engine 5, it's time to apply it to some metahumans. Metahumans are incredibly detailed digital characters that can be fully customized and animated. Let's break it down. Once the Rococo motion capture is imported onto the Unreal Engine 5 skeletal rig, the Rococo data maps perfectly onto our metahuman, making it move just like how I did just a few hours ago. But that's not all. We also need to capture facial expressions, as both of these characters that interact with each other have their faces showing. For facial animations, I use the Rococo head rig in terms of hardware, which was able to hold my phone in front of my face. The LiveLink face app then captured all of this data, both using the actual camera and the depth pass camera that are built into the iPhone itself and creates triple A high quality facial capture without needing any of those annoying markers that you see on the guys from movies like Planet of the Apes or Avatar. And honestly, it looks amazing. The MetaHuman now mimics my facial expressions. Now, sometimes there's keyframes and glitches here and there, and I have to go in and I have to clean them up, but it's nothing crazy. Honestly, most of the time, what came out of MetaHuman Animator was perfect. Now, when it came to voices, I did the voice of the guest, and my brother, Evan, he did the voice of the caretaker. Which leads me to my first mistake. I did the facial capture for both characters because I was the one in the suit. And then later on, I sent those recordings to my brother for him to try and match my lip movement. That's where I messed up. Never, unless you want to punish yourself, have your actor record after the facial capture has been recorded. Because no matter how hard you try, there's always gonna be the odd word here or there that's not gonna sync up to the lips perfectly. And you'll find yourself awake at 4 I am staring at a screen, trying to make these words line up perfectly, gazing into an old geezer's lips. And I mean, hey, I ain't complaining. Dude's got some nice lips. <clears throat> me, mate. 
Now to really sell the eerie, dreamlike quality of Deja Vu, I used several visual techniques. First off, I chose an aspect ratio similar to the box TVs you see from the 60s and 70s. I also added a hazy glow to everything. I also added a lot of warm colors and high contrast for the color grading. Now to further emphasize the old timey vibe, I included a lot of film grain and also a subtle fisheye lens just to give the video that ever so subtle round look that the old TV screens had with how they almost kind of came out a little bit curved, went for that as well. Now these choices helped to create a nostalgic but also at the same time slightly unsettling atmosphere which was perfect for this mysterious hotel setting. But things change dramatically when the character is pulled out of that reality at the end of the movie. Spoiler alert. Now, when the main character steps into actual reality, the aspect ratio shifts to the well-known cinematic look. And that's not all. The color grading also changes. It becomes a lot darker, a lot colder. There's a lot less haze, a lot less glow. Essentially, I'm removing every single aspect that fed into that nostalgic vibe. I'm taking them away and I'm replacing them with things that reinforce a colder, darker, unsettling kind of vibe. And when the character looks around, the hotel isn't brand new anymore. It's not fancy. It's old, it's broken. There's blood everywhere, cracks everywhere in the wall, which highlights the true horror and real threat he has in front of him. And it makes the ending way more impactful and just overall is that cherry on the top, in my opinion. Well, that about does it. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. If you enjoyed this episode, consider liking the video, subscribing, and if you do subscribe, maybe hit that bell as well so that every time I post a new video, you're notified. I plan on being much more consistent now with my upload schedule. I've got a lot of videos on the back burner right now that I'm working on and I'm really excited to get them out there for you guys to enjoy. If there's any stuff that maybe you want to see specifically, maybe ideas you've got for the type of content I make, leave them in the comments, you know. I'm replying to every comment I see. I love talking to you guys. So, you know, feel free to share your opinions down below. But until then, in a bit, lads. Yo, bitch, I got some buzzers crawling in my stomach. I'm from the shadows.